I was tremendously lucky in that I went to the demonstration in 1977, just a half block from here, before people went in to sit in at the federal building to force the federal government to sign the first civil rights for people with disabilities. I was fortunate, I was lucky to have taken my camera and taken the best roll of film I've ever taken. And that led to a number of photos that are a part of Patient No More up upstairs. And I'm gonna be talking about that, and kind of how I got there, and then transition into what I'm trying to do now with my photography. So um, there I am before my disability, and there I am in a, with, in a wicker wheelchair at the hospital after I got my spinal cord injury when I was five years old. So um, I think I'm still cute there, don't I? Yeah, thank you. Stay when the photos Okay, this, I'm, photo description. Uh, this photo was taken in 1952, and it shows me sitting in a wicker wheelchair with a, uh, looks like a watch cap and a, uh, a sweater. And I look a little wan there, which makes sense since I was in the hospital for seven weeks, I think. Five years old, yeah. That's it. <laughs> Seventy years old today, uh, this month. Thank you, thank you. It's a big one. So, as I grew up with a disability, here's a photo of me with a bunch of people in front of a newspaper. Uh, these are people, uh, part of the Sonoma County Bugle. I was the newspaper editor. And this, the, it, the newspaper was in existence from 1970 to 1973. It was an alternative newspaper. And I come from a long line of photographers. My dad was a photographer, my grandfather was, my dad owned a camera store, so, and I tried to make a living as a photographer, and so that's why I was asked to be, I was a photographer when they asked me to be the photo editor of the Bugle. And what happened was, with the deadline every two weeks, I had to take a lot of photos, and I got good. You know, there's something about, well, I love deadlines still to this day, and so here in this picture, it shows me, and I, I put this picture in to show I'm kneeling down with my crutches. In those days, I used crutches and full leg braces to, for mobility. And I'm kneeling down, and that's the stance that I would take to take photographs. And that leads to my point of view when, of the photographs that I take, and that I'm shooting up at people with disabilities, which is rare. You usually see pictures of people with disabilities where people are standing and point shooting down. And there's Michael Funky, who uh, was the editor there with the uh, cigar in his mouth and the uh, flyboy cap and the quart of beer. And uh, he got sober a couple of years after I got sober. A number of us got sober uh, after our bugle experience. So there's my photography, but there's also my politics. And here's a picture of us with a weather balloon. This is my, a good friend from high school, and the weather balloon has stenciled on it, and the war. And we were going to fill the balloon with helium and attach it to a flagpole at the beginning of the Rose Parade, right across from all the television cameras. I grew up in Pasadena. This picture was taken in my home in Pasadena about a mile from the beginning of the Rose Parade. Well, we made it about 100 feet from the, uh, the flagpole, and it hit a tree, and it popped. Aww. But it made a good photo, even though it's low res, showing uh, my politics. So I had my photography in one hand, my politics in another, but not a disability identity. I grew up when to have a disability was not a good thing. But I was starting to explore my disability, and this guy, Steve Diaz was very key. Here's a picture of Steve Diaz uh, in his, using his wheelchair with a bunch of plants. And unlike what I just said where I shot kneeling down, I'm obviously standing up in this one. And Steve and I are playing around with disability imagery. And Steve is starting to explain to me what it's like to be a contemporary disabled person. Steve is the first guy I met with a disability who was hipper than I was, <laughs> which made a huge difference to me. This would have been 1974. Yeah, he's got hair down, what, past his shoulders. Past his shoulders, and a mustache, but not a beard. Yeah, that was the look. 
And here's me in the foreground. Um, I am assume I'm looking at my camera. And I've got a mustache and longish hair. And there's Steve in the background. Um, we're all smoking. And this is 1974. And this is a meeting of the student organization at Sonoma State University. That's where I met Steve. And he and I formed a student organization. And when we were talking about what's our mission, he said, well, we're going to knock shit off the shelves. That's a good mission, but I think we came up with something that was more palatable to whoever was going to accept our membership and give us a little bit of money. What was the name of the organization? Disabled Students Coalition. And coalitions, you know, it has a, a, a ring to it. And that coalition led to the university funding a half-time position. And I went from being somebody who my sole ambition was to make enough money so I could continue to drink beer at the trade winds, shoot pool, and be able to just, you know, live the hippie lifestyle in Katati. Until I met Steve and got involved in disability rights and took on my identity as a disabled person. And I caught on fire. My politics came together with who I was. And so I made sure that when we got a position established that Steve was on the hiring committee. And I made sure that Steve made it possible for me to get hired as the first director of disability services at Sonoma State in 1975. And I did that till 1997. Um, and also, Sonoma State was a place where they would tolerate somebody like me and my politics. It was founded by people from San Francisco State, professors who got sick of San Francisco's faculty politics. And it was primarily a lot of uh, humanistic psychologists. And so it was a very radical place. I mean, in this office, this is our first office, down the hall was the counseling center. And you would hear screams on a regular basis, primal scream therapy. Remember that? Where you'd scream into a, a pillow? Yeah. Well, that happened down the hall. And you hear that <laughs> scream, and you just go on with your work, because that's <laughs> what they did down the hall, you know? That's right, <laughs> Frisbee State. I mean, it was, it was, yeah. And so there was my first secretary. The one, uh, here's a picture through an office door of, I don't know if you guys know Joan Brevis. She is sitting there. She's a student assistant. Joan, for many, many years, ran the uh, computer training center over at the Ed Roberts campus and retired just a couple of years ago. She was a student assistant. Um, and there with her back to us using a wheelchair is my first secretary. And I hired her because she was a wheelchair user and didn't realize she didn't know her alphabet. She went to a special ed. And um, um, she was a terrible secretary. She was horrible. <laughs> and I learned then that you've got to set the bar. If you're going to hire a secretary, having a disability in a disability office is really a good thing but they also have to be able to do the job. I'm still fighting that fight today. And here's our second office. And in the foreground is a guy using an Everest and Jennings power wheelchair, which was, and behind him is another guy using an E&J chair. And one of those, she was a really, a student assistant, a really nice woman. I always felt she was a do-gooder, though. I never quite trusted her, but she did her job well. And we had enough money to hire her. So, and she didn't take a job from a disabled person. So, And I was still playing around with disability, photo disability imagery in this time period. And here's a photo of me wearing cut-off Levi's, my full-leg braces, black leather cowboy boots, holding a bottle of Coors, showing my tattoo, wearing a, a wife beater, my hair slicked back sitting on the edge of my wheelchair. Anything else? I sh hmm? Very sexy. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's my discipline and bondage. You plan to give him a stink eye? <laughs> well, I'm trying to look tough. I'm trying to look cool. So, um, but at this point, still trying to come together with my imagery 
around disability and using myself as part of that, which was part of what photography was doing at the time. This would have been 74-ish, uh, 75-ish, all in this time period where I'm uh, finishing up now my degree and um, that's no mistake, my BA. Psychology. Because the requirements for the major was 24 units of anything in psychology. You didn't have to take intro. You didn't have to take uh, uh, oh, what's, uh, abnormal, nothing. 24 units of anything. And one of the courses I took was sitting around holding hands and saying, oh, and eating bad hippie bread. Um, <laughs> that was Sonoma State. So, um, Rosemary, do you want to read your own? No. I, I'll read it for you. <laughs> Here's a quote from Rosemary. This is from Seeing the Disabled, Visual Rhetorics of Disability in Popular Photography. Photography carries more truth value than other images. There's something about photography that we see it and we think of it as being true, even though that's not necessarily true. We think of photographs as being closer to reality. And that still, I think, continues to be true, even post-Photoshop. Yeah. It's surprising that people still think that photographs are the truth. Or for, for real, yeah. Even pre-Photoshop, though, there's photographs lie. You know, and in a sense, they also tell a story and they advance a cause, and that's what I'm trying to do with my photographs. And what we have here is, is the Reverend Vernon Cox, who is one of the founders of the Marine Center for Independent Living. And it's showing him in his wheelchair in profile, he's holding a banner that says, a, a funky handmade banner that says sign 504, and somebody's pushing him in his manual wheelchair, and in the background is San Francisco City Hall. So it was shot just right out here, right out this window. This is some of the iconic photos that I came up with that day that advance a cause and show us not in a struggle, as Tom Olin's photos typically show. Tom Olin shows the struggle, shows how hard it is to get things done. My photos have a tendency to show the certainty of what we were doing. And so this is the 504 demonstration in sit in April 17th, 1977. So here's three guys using manual wheelchairs, old Everest and Jennings again. One guy's wearing a cowboy hat. And you can see someone signing in the background. And there, this is one of those pictures of certainty, you know, of calmness. These are not people who are storming the barricades. These are people who are somewhat implacable. Here's another people, people on the picket line and with signs saying, no more negotiations, sign 504, access to work. Don't back down on affirmative action. You might break your neck, sign 504. And it's, it's not people out for a Sunday picnic for sure. These are serious people. But it's, there's a certainty here. Here's another on that same picket line. That's Jim Fernandez in, in front using a manual, uh, power wheelchair. You can see a couple of people in uh, power wheelchairs behind. And a big picket sign says, sign 504, we'll wait no more. Yeah, and here's another photo. And there's a number of photographs. What I like about this is the various planes where you can see Two wheelchairs in the foreground, there's a number of wheelchairs in the midground, and then a background, another wheelchair with the city hall in the background. And the person on the right hand side of the frame looking directly at us. This is a, a, something you'll see in my photographs. It's, it comes out of a photo tradition of the 1950s, really, of uh, editorial photographs like Danny Lyon and uh, Bruce Davidson. Uh, even Henri Cartier-Bresson. And another picket sign with more, more wheelchairs. And if you look at this, you can see that I am at the regular height that I usually am when I'm at parties, which is belt buckle height. Uh -huh. And so you can see that the, the gaze on this 
I'm lower than the people using wheelchairs. So in a sense, I, not in a sense, I am looking up at them. And so in a way that elevates them in a way that is not, that you usually don't see in disability photography. And that's just the happenstance that I was using crutches and I'd kneel down to be able to focus my camera and trip the shutter. There's Hale Zucas. I don't, yeah, Hale. Hale Zucas, one of the uh, rolling quads, one of the first people at UC Berkeley who, according to the myth of the rise of the independent living movement, the rolling quads are the one who started it all. And uh, there's some truth to that, certainly. And so there's Hale using it. He uses a head stick to communicate. And he's sitting next to Jim Fernandez. They're both in power wheelchairs. And there's other picketers around, sign 504, we'll wait no more, that same sign again. And I think, yeah, Fran, it, that's the flyer, isn't it? It is, yeah. yeah. That's, the, that's the flyer. Yeah. Yeah, you can, you can see it says demonstrate on it. And I don't know why I was there that day, for sure. I don't know why this was special to me, unlike other demonstrations. I don't know why I took my camera, because I was, I only had so much, I only have so much energy, even today. Once I started working at Sonoma State, I took fewer and fewer photographs because my energy went into the end of figuring out what we were doing and starting a program, not into my photography. Why I took my camera this day, I'm not really sure either. <laughs> Why is that? Uh, somehow I knew, you're right. You are right. I mean, that, I think that's why we were all there, that somehow we knew this was a big one. So that would have, what re, would have resonated with me is that if we get enough people there, we'll make a difference. That might have gotten me there to take the day off work. I mean, thank God I had the kind of job I did. I came down, shot the photos. Steve and I drove back to Sonoma County. And that night, Steve got drunk and hitchhiked into San Francisco and talked his way into the building. and so. Steve was there for the next, how many days? 26 days. Here's probably one of the only uh, photos that, that looks kind of angry. It shows a woman <clears throat> standing on uh, a lift. She's a uh, sign language interpreter. She's standing on the lift of a, uh, of a van. And those are the kind of lifts that we had in those days. Mm -hmm. They're called Tommy lifts. And it um, mostly used to move refrigerators and uh, furniture around. It was hard to uh, operate them independently. But yet, there's an awful lot of disabled people in this photograph. I mean, in the foreground, there's, what, five wheelchairs? Six? But I like how her hands are kind of grasped, and she looks angry. So I think it's cool the interpreter looks angry, but everybody else looks pretty calm. There's Steve Diaz. He reappears with the We Shall Overcome, shows him with his back to the camera uh, in his wheelchair next to a guy using a wheelchair, manual wheelchair, and there's a whole bunch of other wheelchairs around. And you can kind of see a sign that says Equal Opportunity for All. And this photograph has uh, gotten enormous play this last year, particularly in the, with the uh, anniversary of the ADA, 25th anniversary. Um, it was hanging in the, uh, I was in Atlanta summer a couple years ago and went to the National Center for Human and Civil Rights, and which is where Martin Luther King's papers are, and this was hanging in that center about, um, 75 yards from MLK's papers, which, wow. that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's very cool. But it was a disability photograph, so there's a whole bunch of Tom's photos there as well, and they're on foam core, 
rather than being framed, rather than being done really nicely, hanging in a hallway. And the photos I have of it, I should have one here, it shows a bunch of chafing dishes because they're holding a reception for reporters. So there's a bunch of chafing dishes with our photos in the background. So it wasn't exactly, you know, the prime location, but it was in the right place. This is one of the few photographs Patient No More had until Fran and I went and visited Holland DeLille and talked her into giving up the photograph she had. And those came in relatively not late in the process, but later in the process. Because you guys had my photographs from the very beginning. And then we got, got Hall ends, and so a lot of hers are up there as well. So um, these are just words, powerful, proud. Here's the photo, here's a, a, a very famous photo, and it shows an African-American man in Birmingham with a uh, police dog attacking him. And if you're, what's interesting about this photo is it really shift, it was, appeared in newspapers across the country and it shifted how America viewed the African-American civil rights struggle and helped lead to the 1964 Civil Rights Act. And if you're interested in photography, it is imperative that you listen to what Malcolm Gladwell has to say in his podcast about this photograph, because it's not what it appears. This guy wasn't a demonstrator, he was just an observer. And he just got caught up in it. And, and there's a whole bunch of very interesting things, and I don't have enough time to talk about them. But I'll hang out if you want. And here's a photo from the Birmingham Fire Department hosing down African-American demonstrators on the street, which also led to a real shift in people's attitudes. One of the things that occurred to me is that we need more photographs that create a myth about disability, a mythic image of disability, and about the importance of our struggle. So I want to show some of Tom Olin's work. And he's mostly covered ADAPT demonstrations, where ADAPT is our radical organization that has demonstrated. What I'm showing now very quickly is a lot of people using wheelchairs demonstrating in the streets and being arrested. And here's a famous photo of his. It's called the Capitol Crawl, and it's when particularly young people, wheelchair users, crawled up the steps of the Capitol to highlight the need for the ADA. And so it's hard to find Tom's photos. Um, and a, a colleague of mine uh, has been able to find some of the more, that I consider more mythic. And here's one of a couple of guys with the wheelchair users with the uh, adapt flag, which has uh, the wheelchair symbol rather than the Ameri than the state stars on the American flag. Here's a line of wheelchair users. And there's Justin Dart, who's one of the leaders of the disability rights movement. Wade Blank, Wade, Wade Blank? Um, one of the founders of ADAPT, he's a wheelchair user, shows a picture of him separate as never equal in front of a bus. More marchers. I love this photo. This I consider mythic and I think leads to creating a vision of the disability rights movement, showing the ADAPT flag, a guy in the foreground using a wheelchair, a double amputee, well, at least a double amputee, if not twiple or a quad. And this, as you can see, Tom's work, it, it's more about the struggle. Mm -hmm. but, I, but there's something that's, I think, uplifting about that. And dare I say it, inspirational. Yeah. And there's Justin Dart, Judy Human, a number of people marching with a sign that says, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. So disability is rarely photographed, and Rosemary has broken it down into four categories. I've got 15 minutes. Wondrous, sentimental, exotic, and realistic. And so wondrous is strange and familiar, freaks and super creep, crips. 
Here's a guy with a uh, lower body amputation doing a, ha a handstand. That's, oh, right, yes, a famous uh, freak show guy. And then on the right-hand photo is a wheelchair user in um, Yosemite over a many thousand foot drop. Uh, sentimental, here, here's a couple of uh, flyers for uh, March of Dimes. And um, look, I can walk again, the little girl saying as she gets out of her wheelchair. And that's an E and J like I had when I grew up, was growing up. Here's a sentimental shot of a young boy with his cane and his uh, prosthetics, or his orthotics, excuse me. And my favorite of this sentimental, it's a little doggy with a little doggy wheelchair. And if you ever want to drive yourself crazy, go on to uh, YouTube or Pinterest. There is a gazillion shots of little doggies with their little doggy wheelchairs. And there's the exotic. Amy Mullins, I th find very interesting. The lower right shot shows her in her negligee with her running prosthetics. And then the upper left shows her in her leopard prosthetics. Um, and who is this? Amy Mullins. And she, there, she has an interesting YouTube that's not bad talking about how we need to redefine the word disability. She doesn't, thank God, reject the word itself. She has said, do you? I, I'm a little nervous about him, but I think, that there, I think there's a lot there, and I think she explains it to an audience well in saying disability doesn't mean what, what you, the general audience, thinks it means. And it's closer to what I and most of you in the room think it, thinks it means. So. Oh, yeah. Della Young, who, who unfortunately died, this is a poster of hers that says, this is what disability looks like, F star king irreverent, which Stella Young was very, she's the one who coined the term um, inspiration, porn. inspiration porn, yes, <laughs> which is a wonderful term. I mean, it really, coming up with a word. It's like the woman who said she was thought about writing her PhD thesis or coming up with a word for uh, autism, and she came up with neuronormal, and that changed the conversation, that one phrase. Well, neurodivergent as well. Yeah. Yeah, excuse me. I'm running out of juice a little bit here. So um, in terms of irreverence and coming up with a new imagery, here's a number of photographs from Frida Kahlo and Frida Kahlo's closet. Her closet was closed on her death, yeah. and it wasn't until the death of her sister that they exhumed things like the boot that's on the upper right-hand corner that's red with the wonderful decorations on it, and the, uh, the brace in the lower right. And it's, I think her sister was embarrassed about her disability. Mm -hmm. That's my guess. Mm -hmm. And there is no catalog of that show out of her closet, from what I can tell. But I do have a number of photographs. So my current photographs, why do I struggle to represent disability? I grew up at a time where it's not OK to look at disability, even for disabled people. Yeah. And I get a little embarrassed sometimes by things. What makes things iconic? I'm still struggling with that. And what is the insider's perspective? Do I, do I bring that insider's perspective to my work? So this has been a guidepost to me. It shows four Latinas sitting in a car looking tough as nails. And uh, I would describe them as cholas. And uh, they've got a, lot of, a fair amount of ink. And they have a very much a, a, a don't fuck with me attitude that I like. And that I would like to see more disability photography that has some of this. So this is kind of one of those things that is on the wall of my office to kind of remind me of how to, how to look at photographs. Here's a photograph of a guy in the street. On his wheelchair, there's a sign that says, buy a picture, help me get back to school. And I don't know about you, he looks pretty pitiful. Yeah. I found this guy embarrassing. I didn't want to take the photo. 
I snapped the photo. I, I took it very quickly. I didn't want to engage with the guy. I've gotten better about engaging with people on the street. But this is one of the reasons that it's hard for me to take photographs of people with disabilities. But I wanted this side of our community to be seen. And here's a picture of Ann Coppola. And uh, Denise Jacobson has her arm around Ann's neck. This is at yet another memorial at the Ed Roberts campus. And I found this a difficult photograph to take because this is it's a private moment. And I don't like intruding on private moments. But when else do you see a disabled person comforting another disabled person? That, that imagery of that is never shown. Usually it's an able-bodied person comforting a disabled person. And occasionally the roles are switched, but never two disabled people. And once again, I'm shooting from my wheelchair, so I'm at the same level as they are, slightly lower. So it's looking slightly up at them. So I try and shoot the collective of people with disabilities, not the individual. Because that's, sh that's the shift from the 50s till now, is disability as a collective, not as an individual. Um, struggle, but a collective struggle. And I try and get the insider's perspective. Here's Mallory Nelson um, in her green wheelchair, looking at her iPad. And there in the center, using her wheelchair, is Mary Lou Breslin, who looks somewhat shocked and somewhat unhappy. Standing to her right is uh, Jean Stewart, the novelist, looking less shocked but more unhappy. <laughs> and what? Regal. Regal. I don't know. <laughs> OK. And then uh, three other women. I think one of them is um, Mary Lou's sister, who is the least happy. And I'm intruding upon this group. I came around the corner at the Ed Roberts campus at a memorial, I had my camera, I put it to my eye, they looked at me like, who are you to be taking our photograph, even though the two of them know me? And I felt it was important to take that photo, and I felt it was important to give Mary Lou a little mini lecture on, it's important to document our community. Yeah. And I told her, I said, we need to have photographs, we need to, to see who we are. And that actually shifted Mary Lou in my relationship. She's a lot more friendlier to me now. I love this shot. It shows somebody stand. Well, there's three people standing. One who's holding a white cane. Another with a uh, I'm getting tired. Well, there's. Um, the three people standing are getting a selfie taken. And then there's a woman using a wheelchair who looks very serious. And what this was at was at a, um, an expo. And the woman who's using the wheelchair looking serious, she's working. She's in charge of the whole expo. So she doesn't have time for the frivolity that the three people do. And they're having a good time getting their selfie taken. And there to the far right is an able-bodied guy looking on going, huh, wonder what the hell's going on there. And I always like to have an able-bodied person on the edge of the frame who's looking into the frame going, what the hell is going on? Here's a nice shot of Alice Shepard, who's a uh, wheelchair dancer. Just after a performance she did, and she is enormously pleased with how well she did with her performance. <laughs> and she's clutching a bottle of water, and, and she's there with her wheelchair. And I really like this. so sweet of her. And it's not showing her dancing. You, there's a lot of pictures of Alice dancing. Very few of her is just being Alice. So once again, I think this is a good example of an insider shot. You know, it, it, an insider is going to see this. And it's, I think it's rare that an outsider is going to think that's an important shot. Here's Eli Gillardin, who is the executive director at MCIL, Marin Center for Independent Living at an expo, looking into the camera wearing his ADA, ADA 25. 
T-shirt, bunch of wheelchairs in the background, out of focus. He does look tall, doesn't he? And Eli's a little person, yes. Who looks tall, yeah, because I'm, I'm shorter than he is in my, using my wheelchair. Yeah. Yeah, I gave him a hug the other night when he came over to my house, and we're, he is a little taller than I am. <laughs> Good call, thanks. Here's Lake Cowell, who works at the uh, Disability Services and Legal Center, uh, ILC in Santa Rosa, and behind her is a uh, guy who sells van, Tony Nava, and they're both using wheelchairs at a uh, bowling thing. And I think the guy behind Lake, and I like that, I like taking photographs of Lake, she's really lively. There's Miss Wheelchair America, I think. It's in Atlanta, so you, can, you can't tell that she's using a wheelchair, actually, except for the sash that says Ms. Wheelchair and her little crown and her flip. That looks to me like 1964, but... <laughs> but the, but the uh, airbrushed Angel's uh, uh, T-shirt looks more 80s. And here's a picture of Tom Olin. I am enormously proud of this photograph. I'm shooting up at Tom, making him look more bigger than life. He's got his arms crossed. That's his most famous photograph behind him, showing Evan Kemp and uh, the first President Bush signing the ADA on the, on the ADA van. That's Tom's photograph. And there are very few photographs of Tom. I don't know of any other photographs of him. And so I'm just, I'm really pleased that in talking to him, I had the nerve to interrupt our conversation and just take his picture. He's such a sweet guy. Here's a magician, a sleight of hand artist using a, a scooter in Seattle, right near the uh, Rock and Roll Museum. I gave him five bucks. He was kind of grumpy. I don't know what to say about this photo. It, it, it's another one of those, th this is part of our community. I mean, I, that's what I tried to do, is I tried to call this, this guy out as a disabled person. You might walk by him and not think of him as a disabled person. You might think of him as you know, a performer on the street, even though he's using a scooter. But he's, he's a brother. He, he's part of my community. Oh, I've forgotten her name. No, we should all know it. Uh, she was killed here in San Francisco oh. in a traffic accident. Yeah, over three months ago. Hmm? Twee? Yeah. And that's Eli behind taking a photo of me. And I like the, you know, the. It, it's very meta to have a, take a photograph of a photographer taking a picture of you. Yeah. But then to have her look so good in that photo and have her be a martyr to the traffic of San Francisco, yeah. you know, is, I mean, it's very, I don't know, it's touching. And this is before the Pride March. Oh, and in the background is Suzanne Levine, another photographer. And then here's three wheelchair users, two of them dancers, part of a troupe. And the blonde woman in the center is now on Broadway, or was on Broadway a little while ago. Here's another picture, somewhat like the Mallory photo. I mean, another amputee, and there's her photograph, her wheelchair in the background, and she's there with a video camera, waiting to video uh, access dance at Sonoma State's uh, Person Theater. And I just like it with the uh, the light falling down on them from above. It just it makes a uh, rather dramatic shot. The guy next to her, looking rather sweetly upon her. Ah, there's Mallory again. So it, I see these as kind of with the boots and the crust. This is at the uh, De Young. There's uh, two wheelchair users, two women at the De Young, and there's walkies around them who are, who are all blurry because the camera shutter was so slow. And I usually don't take arty photos like this, but 
I was inspired that day, and it turned out to be nice. And now the de Young uses this as their uh, uh, illustration for their accessible program without photo attribution, I'll have you know. <laughs> yeah, and they're real buttheads about, I mean, if you borrow a photograph from them, they're, they're just really tough about attribution, so. No. No? No. It, a power wheelchair is a wonderful platform to take photographs from you because it is very steady. Huh. And so I can brace myself on my armrests and be able, I can shoot at about, I can shoot at a 32nd pretty easily and I can shoot at a 16th. This is probably done at a 16th. So here's um, Ann Finger, who's a wheelchair user. You can't see that. Jim Ferris, who uh, has an obvious mobility disability. You can't see it in the photo either. But we do have Artie from Glee, a cardboard cutout of him in the background there. <laughs> and I took Artie to uh, the Society for Disability Studies, and for a dollar, you could have your photo taken with him. And it went into the scholarship fund. And I love, he was sitting down there, and somebody came in, it was when nobody was around, and went up to the people who were running the conference and said, what is that doing there? So he said, Anthony Tussler brought it. And they said, and the person went, oh, okay. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I didn't know I had a reputation of, of that sort. So here's my Humpty Dumpty series. This is a large stuffed Humpty Dumpty in a manual wheelchair in front of a bunch of uh, secondhand pants. This is a part of, Fran did a wonderful, wonderful show called Display down at Some Arts. And this, I did that for or that show. It's called the uh, Humpty Dumpty Rehabilitation Series. And um, Humpty had to get a job. Has, yeah, Humpty had to get a job. And here's Humpty uh, in his wheelchair uh, among a bunch of bicycles. And here's a, uh, a graduation, high school graduation. It shows a woman in a purple wheelchair in her white uh, graduation gown. and. Uh, Cap, Annalee High School, Annalee Tigers, and it's uh, got a ramp coming into the photo from the right and a flag. I call this my Robert Frank homage. For those of you who know Robert Frank, the photographer. And here is a little minivan, bright red with flames on it that says Yoga Hell parked in front of a place that says Bikram Yoga that has a lot of flames, and it's parked in the disabled parking space. And he does have a placard. It's legitimately parked there. But I love it for the photos, I mean for the colors. It has a sense of humor. And here's a guy, his head's tilted off to the side, getting on a, a, a lift on a railroad car in Alaska. And because it was an overcast day, the colors are pretty saturated. And this was the photo that made me know that I was starting to get my eye back after not taking photos for 30 years. I like this photo of Judith Smith, the founder of Axis Dance. She's in her wheelchair uh, looking down at a woman who's kneeling. And there's something sweet and intimate about it. But also, the person with a disability is in a power position over the non disabled appearing person. And you're looking up. I'm looking up, yeah, at Judith. And here's Bonnie Lukowitz, who performed with uh, Axis Dance and who does uh, accessibility for uh, trails, yeah. uh, along with the late Larry Paradis, who is at the uh, with uh, disability rights advocates. Uh, yet another memorial at the Ed Roberts campus, and the two of them are smiling, looking at each other, and talking to each other. And there's a third wheelchair user kind of in the background. I just like that, because it's uh, people hanging out, having fun. This is uh, Jess Tom, backstage in Biscuitland. It's a performance she does. She has Tourette's. Um, with her cohort, Jess Mabel Jones. 
And it was a stage play they did at Fort Mason that was wonderful. It was just, uh, her TED talk was done at the Royal Albert Hall. That's what, and she had a floor of the Tate Modern Museum for, for an installation she did. Nobody seems to know her in this country, but in England, Royal Albert Hall. What's her name? Her name is Jess Tom, T-H-O-M. And it, her um, performance was backstage in Biscuitland. And it's definitely worth, she's definitely worth checking out. She is superb in her characterization of disability as it relates to her Tourette's. Here's a wheelchair user and his girlfriend. And this is just such a sweet shot. And it's not obviously about disability, but it is a disabled guy. And I couldn't resist putting it in my slideshow just because I like how cute they both are. Yeah. <laughs> and here's a, this is from Display. It's a woman talking, uh, po reading her poetry, right? And Fran tells me the, the woman's, so it's a woman holding a microphone in front of a bunch of art. And there's a woman standing there who's the, Fran tells me is an interpreter. Yeah, to my mind, I looked at her and I, she looked to me kind of like an able-bodied, um, um, I don't know, somebody who's making sure everybody stays in the straight and narrow, <laughs> which I kind of like, once again, I kind of like that. This is Galen Lee, who is one of the tiny NPR's tiny desk concert. She's a uh, violin player, and she plays her violin like a uh, an upper a cello. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm losing my language ability here. Two minutes, okay. And she was performing uh, here in San Francisco, and she's coming back. I think she's probably going to be at Hardly Strictly, and she's. Lindy, my wife, really liked her music, which tells me something. She does kind of a uh, Celtic. Galen Lee, L-E-A. Here's for a performance by Axis Dance. It shows a couple of dancers and a wheelchair user. And here's it. Um, I don't know his name. Jim I know Jim Lebrecht's name, yeah, yeah. with his Crip Camp t-shirt on um, at... Uh, uh, performance at the Ed Roberts campus. So it's a guy holding a microphone talking, a very hip looking uh, wheelchair user with a lot of ink. What's his arm say? California. And here, perfect. Did it just on time. After Caravaggio. Uh, what's, there's a woman who's standing who is looking down at somebody who's a wheelchair user who's back to us and then looking at that woman is another standing woman who's wearing a crown and it has it looks kind of like a madonna because of the crown and it looks kind of like caravaggio the people looking into the frame and i just i like the renaissanciness of it and the painterliness of it. And the woman wearing the crown, I don't have her name at hand, but she does a lot of work under the uh, hashtag hospital glam. Hospital. Glam, G-L-A-M. She has a hidden disability, and so what she does is when she's in hospitals, in doctor's waiting rooms, she takes selfies of herself glamming it up. She's a rather attractive woman, and so it's it, it creates this tension of, you're not supposed to be doing that in hospital rooms, right. and she does. So, I do believe, that's it. Hey. <laughs> Got over the finish line, and my wife helped me with enough of the words, so. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So that's what I'm working on these days, and gonna keep on working on. <laughs>